Hey there, Ramon Osu with you here on the court. We're talking about how to make the easy backhand every time, and as a bonus, how to grow a beard in five seconds. Little joke there, we actually recorded this uh, in advance of our interview, but the thinking behind this course was everybody misses hard shots relative to their skill level, including pros. But if we just don't miss the easy shots, the shots that are really nothing special, we're gonna win a lot more points and we're gonna be a lot better off for it. So before we get started, you might be thinking, Ramon, is this just a way to kind of learn to push the ball and just to get it back? And it's a very legitimate concern. And actually, you're going to be happy to know that in this course, you're going to be developing foundational skills that are going to allow you to grow your backhand skill level without limits. That means you're going to have the foundational pieces to hit the ball with power, with spin, with accuracy, and with consistency and life is gonna be great. So without further ado, we're gonna get right into it and talk about the contact point because the contact point is the most important part of any shot because it's the moment that decides what the ball's gonna do, right? So we wanna make sure that that's locked in really solid. Everything we do before and after is really icing on the cake. So let's get into this. Now stop me if you've heard this before, just hit it out in front of you. <laughs> to me, hit it out in front is pretty vague and can sometimes be hard to get a handle on. We want to make contact at a very precise point, and that's the 45 degree angle into the court. This is something I learned years ago from a coach I had named Jack Brody, who really broke down the strokes into kind of scientific truths, which was way over my head at the time, but after hours of calculation and study, I found that to be roughly here for the one-handed backhand, so notice our, our dominant arm is on the 45 degree angle. And here for the two-handed backhand, which is when our non-dominant arm is along the 45 degree angle. Non-dominant meaning the hand that you don't normally hold the racket with on your forehand. The really good news here is this is where you get the most bang for your buck from a power standpoint. And you can change the direction of the shot with a slight feathering of the wrist, as you see here which if you followed me for any amount of time, you've heard me talk about a bunch. We wanna make sure that the first thing we do when we see the ball coming to our backhand is we wanna line up our hips to this other 45 degree angle like you see me doing here. Don't worry about where your feet are, just make sure you're lining up your hips first and we'll deal with the rest as we go. Don't take my word for this, try it and see for yourself and you'll notice that your best contact is always out here on this 45 degree angle into the court. All right, so we know where we wanna make contact. We know we wanna initially line up our hips to that other 45 degree angle. We're gonna turn on the ball machine here, but before we do, I wanna kind of reemphasize this, that this is a really good process to go through, okay? So there's a, there's a tendency for a lot of us who are results oriented to focus on, is the ball even going over the net? And that's not what I want you to focus on here. I want you to focus on the process and you're in turn gonna make a lot of shots in. But especially in these first couple steps, make sure that we're really dialing into the process and then you're not trying to make the ball in. That'll happen on its own. So in step two, our goal is to really just bunt the ball or just really tap it with our contact point being on that 45 degree angle at contact. Again, our, our dominant arm, or your hitting arm, if you're using a one-handed backhand, is gonna be on the 45. And if you're using a two-hander, that's gonna mean your non-dominant arm is on that 45 degree angle. Now you're gonna notice, when you get it just right, the ball's gonna fly off your racket. Just make sure you squeeze the racket a bit right at contact so the racket sort of wins that collision. And that's all we're doing here. We've lined up our shot by lining up our hips to the other 45 degree angle. We're moving to the ball and we're just bunting the ball right on that 45 degree angle. In general, extension away from your body with our arms and our hands will give you more leverage and therefore more power. And that's why you see Nadal and Federer, two of the best you know, backhands in the game, with a fairly extended arm at contact. You can still get a good pop if your arm's a little bit bent, but more extension is always gonna be good because it's gonna give you more leverage. So just find what's comfortable for you and avoid the T-Rex arm at all costs. All right, step three is now we're gonna be playing with a slightly longer bunt, almost like a half swing, like if you were playing baseball. So we're still starting from contact. We're using this to kind of line up our shots, right? But as the ball gets closer, we're gonna take the racket back just a little bit and have a little bit of a follow through extending out towards the target like this, almost like you're pushing the ball. 
Again, the goal here is not to take a full swing, and it's not even necessarily to make the ball in, but you're gonna find that it, you'll probably start making some shots in at this point if you're hitting the ball cleanly and you're at the 45 degree angle. But it's just to get you comfortable gradually lengthening your swing and you're still completely focused on making contact at the 45 degree angle, pushing your hand out to the target and having a great day at the office. All right, with step four, we're gonna change gears a little bit and we're gonna start focusing on taking the ball on the rise. Now, the reason you wanna do this is this is ultimately gonna give you confidence to step into your backhand and it will actually end up in the long run letting you dictate more points by taking away time from your opponent and running around like a chicken with your head cut off a lot less, which is awesome. So to do that, what we want to do is set up right near where the ball's going to bounce off the ball machine or hitting partner or wall and just start by meeting the ball right on that 45 degree angle, kind of bunting it on its way up. And I want you to do this for a few minutes just so you get the feel of it. We're just getting comfortable letting the ball run into our racket at that 45 degree angle and just almost pushing it forward a little bit as the ball is on the way up from the bounce or on the rise. Now, once you got that, we're gonna take it a step forward and start coming over this ball with a little bit of top spin. And we'll do that by keeping the racket face going vertically into contact. So we're kind of covering the ball here with a little bit of spin. This spin's gonna help us control the ball off our opponent's racket when he starts hitting those kind of deeper, heavier balls and give us a way to hang in there and maybe even eventually attack these balls on the rise. This is a uh, really a critical skill if you wanna play close to the baseline or if you just wanna be able to attack the short ball that's floating onto your side of the court. And you'll wanna exaggerate this at the beginning, okay? Really think vertically as your racket meets the ball because we can always blend that top spin with a little bit of forward or a little bit of horizontal swing if we want to have a little bit more of a drive. But we wanna focus on the top spin here by keeping your racket going up the back of this imaginary 45 degree angle here, getting some top spin. And again, it's gonna be a great day at the office when you get this. All right, step five is now we're gonna go back to the baseline and start from the slot position, which looks like this for the one-hander, kind of in our holster here, and this for the two-hander, more like you know down by our hip pockets here. And we're gonna to start to lengthen our swing a little bit more. We're still focusing on making contact at the 45 degree angle and extending our arms out to the target like this. So here's an advanced tip. This is gonna give you more power ultimately. Notice as I do this, that my hip starts the movement. My hip starts the stroke and my arms are really just going along for the ride. So you wanna make sure that you're doing the same thing. And it's not really like the tail wagging the dog, so to speak, okay? Keep your hands on your side. So if you're righty like me, that's your left side. Now, as the ball gets closer to that contact point, you wanna rotate your hips and pull your arm or arms slowly into the hit. Now I can hear you now, you're probably thinking, Ramon, I thought this was all about racket head speed. When am I gonna start really ripping this ball? Now remember, we're laying the groundwork here for a rock solid, consistent backhand that gives you the foundation for ripping the ball. But you want consistency first, make it dependable first, then we're gonna make it into a weapon, trust me. If you wanna develop consistency, you wanna get a great sense of where that contact point is, how it feels, so you can get there repeatedly. Then once you have it in your muscles, you have it in your body, now we can start talking about accelerating the racket. The problem is if you just start by swinging for the fences, you might hit a few in, but you're gonna miss a ton of balls. And I can pretty safely say that the majority of points at the 3.0 to 4.0, even into the 4.5 levels, are won and lost on errors. So just don't make them. And I know I keep hammering this point home, but I really want you to get this. This is the way to rip your backhand, but more importantly, this is the way to hit a backhand that you don't miss with. All right, step six, now we're getting into the stroke. So let's start from the take back position. And there's a lot of variations on this. So if you look at say Federer to Rafa or um, Shapovalov and Djokovic, everyone's gonna have slightly different styles. So you just wanna know what's really important. And here the hitting elbow or elbows are slightly elevated and you've got some space between your elbows and your body. You're not pinched in here like you forgot to put on deodorant. And the racket tip is up, it's going towards the sky. Now as the ball gets closer, 
we're going to drop the racket into the slot from step five, and then we're going to pull forward with our hips into contact, pulling our arms through the shot. Again, we're thinking nice, slow, and easy here first. Just get a feel for the contact, get a feel for the motion. And you'll notice that if your drop goes into the hit, if the timing is right, you're going to get a lot of pace on the ball without trying to do a whole lot, which is pretty cool. You just drop into the hit and extend out into contact. All right, now step seven, we're going to start from a neutral or a ready position because theoretically we don't know if this ball is coming to our forehand or our backhand. Well, we do, but you know what I'm saying, right? So just add our turn. As the ball comes in, we're going to go right into the take back position. Then we're going to find that slot before the ball bounces on our side of the court and pull through into contact. You may want to think about this in pieces at the beginning. So you have a clearly defined take back. You're hitting that slot position before the ball bounces and then going out to contact and finishing the stroke. This is going to seem kind of robotic and that's totally cool because you really want to be solid in these key positions if you want to make all the easy backhands and win a bunch of free points before you make it all silky and smooth like Federer or Djokovic. So just go ahead here. Don't try to kill the ball. Stay nice, smooth, nice and easy. Feel that contact and notice when it comes off your racket the way you want it, what does that feel like? We want to do more of that. All right, step eight is we're going to start smoothing out the edges here, and that starts with the center of your body. And I want you to think of your hips almost like a vacuum cleaner sucking the ball in and then spitting it back out. So you want to get your timing with the oncoming ball with the center of your body. So you're kind of bringing the ball in and then sending it out. And the key is to try and be continuous with your hips here whenever possible. This is going to give you a smooth swing and effortless power. Now, as far as the timing goes, your hands are always going to be slightly behind your hips. And that's why you hear coaches say uh, lag. You want the lag on your ground strokes. As your hips pull forward, your hands are going to lag behind, and that's creating a stretch, which turns into potential kinetic energy, which turns into a powerful shot. Again, notice that when you're on contact, all of these steps that we're adding here always come back to what's happening at contact. And if something doesn't feel right, just rewind this video and go back to the previous step or two until it does feel right. And as you get more comfortable with this connection between your hips and the ball, you can start thinking about rounding your swing path a little bit more like we're doing here. So it's not as segmented, not as robotic, and it resembles a little bit more of a loop, almost like a figure eight. All right, step nine, we're gonna practice hitting a few of these on the rise with all of the fundamentals that we've talked about so far. Here, I want you to pay extra special attention to the timing with your hips into and out of the stroke and getting into that contact point, the 45 degree angle at the right time in the right rhythm. And if you've spent some time on all of the previous steps, this will seem like a natural step forward and it'll give you a great foundation, not only for making the easy backhand, but being able to handle more and more difficult balls, returning those balls, and maybe even starting to punish those shots, which is cool. All right, finally, step 10 is to grab a buddy and start rallying. This is where we put it to the test. If you have a friend who's steady, these are great guys to practice with because you can really ingrain these particular skills even deeper. But I truly believe that you'll find out exactly where you are when you can step on the court with anyone including the pushers, I know you don't like hitting against them, but including the pushers, the dinkers, the dunkers, the blasters, serving volleyers, and you're going to be able to handle everything they throw at you.